video, we will be discussing the third part of Wasteland, the fire ceremony. So, we have already discussed a game of chess and the buried of the dead in earlier videos. So, if you haven't watched that, I have provided the link in the description below. So, let's start this video and see what Eliot says in this part of the poem, the fire ceremony. Let me also remind you that in the first part of the poem, that is, in the burial of the dead, Eliot concentrated on the lack of spirituality in the people of Wasteland. Whereas in the second part of the poem, in the game of chess, Eliot focused on the lack of love. Here, Eliot is again bringing another theme into the poem. He mostly discusses the teachings of Buddha and Saint Augustine, that is teachings from both East and West. There is a reason why he chose Buddha and Saint Augustine's teachings. One is that both had experienced the pleasures of Bodhi before deciding to follow a spiritual path. Also, they believed that there is a possibility for purification. They saw the destructive elements of life in terms of fire. The title, The Fire Sermon, is from Buddha's Fire Sermon. We will make one more thing clear before we move into the lines. One is that the main theme of the poem, it is about passion and sensuousness. We already talked about this, that Buddha and Saint Augustine had experienced the pleasures of life, passion and sensuousness of human nature. So that is one theme in this section. And the next is the sources of misery and suffering which is also based on the teachings of Buddha and Saint Augustine. Now we will move into a line by line analysis of the poem. The section opens with the description of river Thames. Now the description is very similar to Spencer's description of Thames in his work Prothalmion. Spencer's Prothalmion portrays river Thames in an idealized vision. Now Eliot gives one or two lines just as how Spencer has described river things. That is, he says, the river's tend is broken. That is, the trees on both sides of the river, they used to form a tent, a canopy over the river. Now, since the leaves have fallen down, the tent is broken and the wind, since the wind is passing through these bare trees, the rustling sound is not heard anymore. That is why he says, the wind is unheard. So, till here, how Eliot presents river Thames is quite similar to how Spencer presented it in his Prothalmion. Spencer had called Thames sweet Thames. He gave a scene of young ladies at the riverside picking flowers and making garlands for the bride. So what Eliot is doing is he is giving a contrasting scene. He is presenting a contrasting scene showing the actual Thames of contemporary wasteland. He says, the nymphs are departed, sweet Thames, run softly till I end my song. Now, these lines were also used by Spencer, but here the nymphs refer to modern fashionable ladies who search for rich men. It's not real love, it's only a show off. What Spencer had talked about this same river in his poems doesn't exist anymore. And then Eliot brings another theme into the poem which is pollution. Thames is full of empty bottles, sandwich papers, silk handkerchiefs, cardboard boxes, cigarette ends. It's totally polluted. So in the modern world, a poet wouldn't think of writing a poem about Thames as how the Renaissance poets did. And along with all the things that are there in river, he says that sometimes one may also find testimony of summer nights. That is, Thames is now a place where groups of merrymakers and chance lovers meet. Very casual relationships. The nymphs are departed and their friends, the loitering hires of city directors, departed, have left no addresses. So he says the modern ladies and their casual lovers, rich people, have not exchanged their addresses because they had formed a casual relationship for a moment's recreation only, not to keep for life long. And he says, by the waters of lemon, I sat down and wept. So the poet, he is left here, he is standing beside the river. He watches this river and he weeps over its decay. 
when we are talking about decay it's not only the decay of river things but it is also the decay of mankind now here he just changes the name of the river to lemon maybe because lemon is known to be the river of lovers now before he ends the stanza there are two references here sweet thames run softly till i end my song sweet thames run softly for i speak not loud or long this is again the recurring refrain from spencer's joyful wedding poem now the sound is like mocking and the last two lines but at the back in a cold blast i hear the rattle of the bones and the chuckle spread from ear to ear this is a reference to andrew marvels to his coy mistress in the poem to his coy mistress marvel says but at my back i always hear time's winged chariot hurrying near here eliot uses these lines to show spiritual death according to eliot this spiritual death has made this place a place of decay in the next part of the poem eliot talks about a person who is fishing we understand that this person He is the brother of the fisher king that we have already talked about in the introduction to wasteland we already know that fisher king is always wounded and impotent so his brother here is lamenting the impotency of the king and he fishes for his redemption now the place where this person fishes is quite different he says a rat crept softly through the vegetation dragging its slimy belly on the bank and he was fishing in a dull canal again there are reference to pollution in the poem the rat here represents decay in the society and the dirty surroundings now he says he saw white naked bodies on the ground and floating in the river now this is a picture of pure evil even though we have seen the myth of fisher king where he fishes day and night because it is the only thing he can do for his kingdom but here his own brother is fishing for him and the circumstances in which he is fishing it's totally different it's all over dead and decay around him the next lines are again similar to andre marvel's lines in to his coy mistress but at the back i always hear time's winged chariot hurrying near the same thing is said in a different way here here instead of time's winged chariot what is the narrator hearing he hears the sound of horns and mortars horns and mortars that will bring sweeney to mrs porter in the spring here sweeney represents sexual vulgarity and mrs porter is a woman of doubtful virtue she might have been working in a brothel and then he says oh the moon shone bright on mrs porter and on her daughter now here there is also another reference from john day's work parliament of bees the story is that actaeon was hunting and he accidentally saw diana goddess of chastity bathing and he was turned into a stag and was killed by his own hounds because of this sin that he committed so for diana moon was a very special symbol it was a symbol of her purity here for mrs porter it is nothing like what it was to diana it is not a symbol of purity for her and she washes her feet in soda water now the last line is from a song sung by the australian soldiers during world war in their song they have this character named mrs porter and these lines are only a polite version of that vulgar ballad you might have noticed that from what we have discussed till now the theme of this section is already highlighted that is passion and sensuousness and especially passion of sex now look at these next lines this jet jet has been already mentioned in the poem before and this stands for the song of the philomel now philomel was transformed into a nightingale and these sounds seems as if she is wailing so the idea of rape and man's maltreatment of helpless women is again highlighted here the theme of passion and lust here philomel stands as a symbol of all those helpless women in wasteland 
and the next line the unreal city this has also been discussed earlier in the poem in the section the burial of the dead unreal city refers to eliot's london but in a general meaning it refers to the whole modern world the same is the case with the next line under the brown fog of a winter noon the brown fog is showing the pollution of this place and here the narrator encounters a person named mr eugenides now this person here he is a merchant his name eugenides means well born but apparently it's a wrong notion because he is very unkept and he talks common french so this person eugenides is asking the narrator to come to london at the canon street hotel followed by a weekend at the metropole now he is making some suggestions i'll make it very simple Eugenide comes to London with his pocket full of dried fruits, and he has some documents and bills. He invites our questioner, the narrator, in a very common French, to come to lunch with him. Now he is asking the narrator to go to places that have been very notorious for homosexual incidents. His invitation is considered to be homosexual. so our poet eliot has also introduced another theme homosexuality into the poem with the previous scene now let's move on the next part starts with the lines at the violet hour now violet hour means dusk violet can also stand for the perfumes the violet which is used to make perfumes which can also again suggest sexual meetings The following lines are very interesting. When the eyes and back turn upward from the desk, when the human engine waits like a taxi, throbbing, waiting. Now, here a woman, a female worker, who walks like a machine. She is compared to a machine. She raises her eyes and back, and she is throbbing because she is too tired from all these works. She wants to go home. And all of a sudden. from the next line we understand that i tyrius the narrator of the poem changes again so this is one of the features of modernist poems that there is no fixed narrator the narrator keeps changing now the few continuing lines are a description of tyrius he is blind he is throbbing between two lives and he has wrinkled female breast and he can see at the violet hour Now if you know the story of Tiresias this lines would be more clearer to you the story is from Ovid's Metamorphoses Now Tiresias had once seen two snakes copulating and since then he has been miraculously transformed into a woman After this we see another incident where god Jupiter and Juno were having a conversation and jupiter jokingly said to juno that women receive more pleasure in love than men do but juno denied and they had a small argument between them and then finally they decided to ask the wise tiresias because tiresias is a man who has known both the sides but what happens is tiresias supported jupiter and juno becomes very angry that she made tiresias blind Jupiter felt pity for Tiresias and he gave the power of knowing the future and insight to Tiresias thus Tiresias became the most famous prophet he became a blind prophet blind because Juno cursed him and prophet because Jupiter gave him the power here in the poem Tiresias is not a character he is only a spectator Tiresias in his insight sees this typist woman coming home and then we have a description of the typist at home where she clears her breakfast lights her stove lays out the food in tins she does all what she does usually at her home and here Tiresias saw all what is happening and from his insight he can see what is going to come he had seen a lot of similar scenes so he could predict what is going to happen and what is that he is telling us he here i means tiresias he too awaited the unexpected guest so another person is going to come to the home of this typist 
and that person is a young man it's a man his appearance is not that pleasing he has a lot of pimples and swellings on his face and he is a small house agent's clerk we also notice that he has an unusual bold stare now boldness is not supposed to be his natural trait he is only a clerk but in front of this woman he has a kind of superiority so this man comes in and he guesses that the time is now he is thinking that the time is right for love making with the lady who is bored and tired after her work he knows that she will not resist his attempts though she may not take active interest he is engaged by her passiveness and indifference he doesn't care whether she is interested now this is like satirizing the modern romance by eliot and then tiresia says he had foreseen all this as said earlier tiresias is not a character but only a spectator but he is one of the most important characters in the poem because he unites this whole of the rest the two sexes meet in tiresias and thus what he sees is in fact the substance of the poem and tiresias says that this episode that has happened of this sexual intercourse this has been an experience shared by a lot of poor women in all ages and here this man he finally gives a kiss and then he doesn't wait for a conversation instead he go down the stairs so here we see the life of these poor women they are helpless they are in poverty and their living conditions are really bad and they are being forced into violent mechanical sexual acts which they are not at all interested in and what did the typist do after this man left she turns and looks in the glass in the mirror and see no damage has been done to her face she is relieved that it's all over and she is not even aware of her departed lover look at this lines well now that's done and i'm glad it's over there is a tone of total indifference and then there are lines from oliver goldsmith's the vigar of wakefield this section shows the meaninglessness of chastity which was once considered to be very important and again we find that she smooths her hair with an automatic hand and puts a record on the gramophone this act emphasizes the automatic mechanical nature of the sexual performance now from the very beginning of this scene we see words like machines uh, now automatic and such words that show this is all so artificial so along with love even music has been degraded into this coming back to the earlier lines of the poem this is a very unreal city where love or music is not pure or divine after this for a short time there is a positive tone to the poem the first line this music crept by me upon the waters is from tempest and this is spoken by ferdinand so there is finally some music so the narrator moves along the strand up to queen victoria street in london and he says sometimes he can hear the peasants playing the mandolin a musical instrument and there is clatter the fisherman is also living a contented life so there is music there is laughter and clatter so it's overall lively but this happiness and this beauty is temporary because soon from the next line onwards the tone changes soon we have the song of the three thames daughters the original story is that the thames daughters they lament because the gold the rhine gold which was very sacred to them was lost here the daughters cry because the river is polluted the beauty of the river is no more it is lost now through these lines again the narrator brings back the polluted images of thames 
the lines the river sweats oil and tar so these indicate pollution and after this we are told there are boats in this polluted river with red sails and these are moving to leeward with all the other waste there are drifting logs to the boat is moving towards greenwich and then to isle of dogs greenwich is the place where queen elizabeth was born and it is also the palace in which she had entertained the earl lancaster so through their song we also have a reference to queen elizabeth and lancaster's affair and after that if you have noticed here these lines indicate the cry of the tame daughters as this is a song sung by them after each part of the song they have this cry in the next stanza of their song we get a glimpse of the royal pleasure trip of elizabeth 1 and earl of lancaster it's simply about their boat trip yet this passage has a purpose if you have noticed the affair between elizabeth and lancaster is similar and different at the same time as the affair between the typist and the man that we have discussed before even though this was love for love's sake in queen elizabeth's time this had some magnificence and this is very unlike the earlier scene of the typist that we saw on the other hand these lines can also give the meaning that love here is sterile and after this there is again that cry of the tame daughters the following lines are sung by the tame daughters itself but they sing separately their own pitiful stories in the first girl song the first lines show pollution and then she sings highbury bore me richmond and q undid me by richmond i raised my knees in a vacation spot which was haunted by pleasure seekers she was undone in the floor of a narrow boat the second tame's daughter she sings of another incident where she was given false promises eliot presents the picture of a girl after intercourse and the memory is still in her heart but she remembers that after the event the boy with her was repentant and he promised a new start she didn't resent him she just maintained silence and the third tame's daughter says about an incident that happened at margate sands the incident itself was so shocking to her that she cannot connect anything she doesn't remember what happened but she says her finger nails was broken so we assume that she was raped at this resort and thus we have come to an end to this section and this section concludes with a spiritual reference the reference is from the works we talked about in the beginning that is saint augustine's and buddha's works both had talked about spiritual regeneration which could be achieved by departing from the lust of the flesh in saint augustine's confessions he says that when he was 16 he always wanted worldly pleasures but then he gradually discovered the value of spiritual love so these lines to karthesh then i came burning 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 these lines represent regeneration fire is shown as a purifying symbol and o oh lord do pluckest me out this is like a prayer uttered by agustin where he asked the lord to pluck him out of this burning fire of lust so that is how the section ends the section is mainly focused on the theme of passion and lust and it ends with the prayer of saint agustin to help him come out of his lust and we have come to an end to this video the links of all the other parts of wasteland has been provided in the description please check that out and if you have found this video useful don't forget to subscribe that's it for this video thanks for watching